Poor K by Daniel Saucedo. I saw him today. It was brief and fleeting, and I know he saw me as well, our eyes locked for a second. But to me, it was eternity. So many thoughts can fill your head when you're just a little boy. I was only five. I don't remember much, but I do remember why I am terrified of church to this very day. Our church was a small Catholic church in the poorest part of Amarillo, Texas. Sunday mornings always smelled like old lady rose perfume and my uncle's rancid breath after a heavy night of drinking. Even at five, the smell was enough to make you nauseous. My grandma was no exception. After years of insight, I had come to realize that she only did it to cover the smell of alcohol that was released through her son's pores. Being sandwiched between two adults in a church with no AC was excruciating. Each minute seemed like an hour, and our clothes seemed to just stick to the back of the maroon-colored vinyl pews. Summertime always made church service twice as long, and when heavy-set Mexicans start to sweat, it smells like stale alcohol and day-old fajita meat. When we left service, my grandmother gripped my hand tightly as we approached the front door. She sped up enough to make my tiny feet stumble. I tried to catch myself, but she ripped the slack out of my arm and pulled me up quickly. As the next group made their way into the church, my grandmother loosened her grip and let me walk alone. I turned around, but wish I hadn't. Two heavy-set men unloaded the tiniest coffin from a large, pristine black hearse. Women and men were crying uncontrollably. I heard the loudest of the cries coming from a man. He was in the center of a circle, and others tried to console him. He lunged for the coffin, and the weeping circle had to stop him from toppling the man with the precious cargo. Poor Kay! Poor Kay! He cried over and over. Even at five, I knew the answer to his question. As the miniature coffin made its way into the church, he quickly looked away in disgust. His face was grimaced beyond belief. As he walked from the large stained glass doors, he wiped his tears with a trembling hand. He dry heaved and tried to catch his breath. His shaky knees buckled, and he fell to the ground and started sobbing hysterically again. I stopped and stared. I finally found my courage enough to speak. I asked, Senor, Senor, are you okay? His head lifted up sluggishly. He took a deep breath and looked to face the tiny voice that spoke to him. Our eyes met, and with a quivering lip, he said, My poor baby Emilio is gone. Poor Kay, poor Kay. In that instant, I knew without a doubt that that I was looking at myself. I experienced his pain. I sensed his loss. I turned around and ran as fast as I could down that dusty, cobbled brick road. My grandmother screamed my name, and I stopped. I tried to catch my breath, but my lungs burned. I vomited and managed to get some on my scuffed black shoes. I wiped my mouth and turned around unhurriedly to face my grandmother. She violently gestured me back. I didn't want to go back, but the car was near the front. I tried to walk as slow as I could, but she made that all-too-familiar face where I usually ended up picking a switch, so I reluctantly sped up. As we made our way back to the front, I remember grabbing the corner of the coarse brick wall and just barely peeking around just a forehead, then slowly an eyebrow, then even slower, just one eye. But no one was there. 
No black hearse, no crying people, and most importantly, no me. Father Gonzalez was outside still talking to families and friends. As we walked by, he shook my uncle's hand and blessed us by performing the sign of the cross. I looked at Father Gonzalez and asked him, Why aren't you inside with the funeral? He looked at me, quite puzzled, and then he said, Son, God has granted us peace this Sunday. There is no funeral today. Years have passed, and I am grown now, but I have never stopped thinking of that day. The pain I felt, the horror of feeling something so unimaginable that a five-year-old could not even explain. Emotions that were so foreign to me. When my grandmother was alive, she told my wife a story about when I was five and that I got so sick that I slept for five days. I don't remember that or any other memories of when I was five. This is one story that I've never told anyone to this very day, not even my beloved wife. My wife called me at work today. She said she was too excited and couldn't wait to tell me. We're having a baby. She's already convinced it's a boy. She wants to name him Emilio. Emilio. 